The timing was grimly apt. A year ago, police labeled Bruce MacArthur a serial killer. Today, they were in the courtroom to hear him admit it. What happened today was a sure thing, eight uh, pleas of first degree murder uh, for the eight murdered men. It wasn't, you know, possible seconds, it wasn't manslaughters, it was eight firsts. Um, and yeah, it was sparing the community and sparing more so the family members of, you know, potentially seeing graphic evidence uh, tendered to court. Instead, soon after a stooped, shuffling MacArthur entered court, a glimpse, a sickening sense of how he killed his victims. Court heard most of the murders were sexual in nature, including confinement with ropes, that there was use of a ligature in some of the deaths, disturbing too, evidence of staging of his victims in photos. As the Crown read out the details, MacArthur stood expressionless, while family members and friends of the victims looked on, stone-faced. They avoided the media glare later, a community leader spoke for some of them. It's really tough because sitting there and listening to uh, the family sort of experience, uh, explain the fact that they don't know what's going on or they don't seem to understand fully what's happening and, uh, and the fact that their loved one is gone and in such a horrific way, um, you know, that was the tough part. Why MacArthur killed the men is still a question, but Cord heard today he was very careful in his planning. Police found a duffel bag in his apartment containing duct tape, a surgical glove, rope and a bungee cord, zip ties and syringes, as well as mementos of his victims, including jewelry. Police also found victims' DNA and a murder weapon in MacArthur's van. He had sold it to this auto parts lot. Still unclear where MacArthur dismembered his victims before hiding their remains in planters and in a ravine behind a house where he stored his landscaping tools. Karen Fraser's home was a crime scene for months. It feels so personal. Hello. She met two of the victims, Skandaraj Navaratnam and Majid Kahan. MacArthur had brought them by. Just thinking about the last moments of those men, it, it comes to me quite often, uh, particularly the two that I met, very briefly, but I, I did meet two of them, and if I'm haunted by that, yes, I am haunted by that. Haunted, too, by the man she thought she knew for nearly a decade. I don't know if I believe in the word closure. I think possibly an easing is all, all you get. Not for me, closure won't happen. But the way I'm trying to look at it, the man I knew actually didn't exist. So that's the best I can go with. This is someone else entirely. So, Joanna, it's so interesting listening to Karen Fraser there. I gather she's going to be able to make a victim impact statement. Yes, she will, and she plans to, and there are about 20 other victim impact statements expected, and already some family members have told police they won't be at the sentencing hearing mm -hmm. because they don't want to be there when the Crown reveals more information. When you were there today, what struck you the most about that moment? The fact that the families remain private, that the police are front and center, there was about a dozen of them in attendance in court. And, you know, it kind of speaks to the fact that this investigation spanned nearly a decade. And very, there was so much investment put in by the police before they finally cracked the case. So it was very important for them, they told us after, for all of them to be there. Even though they didn't all speak to the camera, you saw them all standing behind, mm -hmm. flanking the officers who did. Okay, Joanna, thanks very much. Thank you.